Hello and welcome to my first ever review, and it's a review of FreeBSD 11.1 .1. installed on real hardware and used daily as a production workstation. I have five machines in total running FreeBSD, ranging from a 10 year old HP 6715P laptop to a 2 year old AMD 8350 32GB of RAM self build desktop. The machine that I am reviewing FreeBSD 11.1 .1 on is an HP XW6400 workstation with 16GB of RAM and twin quad core Xeon E5345s. The graphics card is an NVIDIA Quadro FX3800. I have two 1TB SATA drives stuck in there as well. The keyboard is a Sun Microsystems Type 7 USB keyboard, UK layout and the associated mouse that came with it. The default user experience on FreeBSD will be one of horror and confusion if you are expecting a graphical login manager and then a desktop. FreeBSD is a blank canvas. It allows you to tailor it to your exact needs. And if those needs require a full GUI experience, it can provide that via a few simple commands in the terminal. I've installed XDM and changed it to match the desktop of the Motive Window Manager. And so it gives a relatively smooth experience to those who log in. And the latest version of NVIDIA driver available for my quad draw, as of this video, is 340.102, which seeing that this is not a gaming PC is just fine. There are some tweaks uh, I made to the system after installation to make it more responsive for desktop workstation use, um, and I will list them in another video. Audio on FreeBSD 11.1 needed no intervention. It worked out of the box and detected my Realtek ALC262 based onboard sound with no problem at all on the XW6400. Hardware detection of USB based Wi-Fi devices was 100%. I tried plugging in a TP-Link TLWN823N and a TP-Link WN725N which are two small USB based Wi-Fi receivers and they work straight away. If you want to check out FreeBSD, but see if it's compatible with your hardware, um, you could try TrueOS, which is a version of FreeBSD with a more user-friendly skin on top. TrueOS uses the most current version of FreeBSD, not the stable release, and the most current version is 12. So you have, if you if you ever find that perhaps FreeBSD doesn't fulfill your needs or you find it difficult to get compatible uh, hardware with it, um, checking out TrueOS is probably the next best thing. There are two main file systems available natively on FreeBSD. Unix file system, or otherwise known as UFS, and the Zeta file system, which is ZFS. And the file system installed on this system that I'm reviewing is UFS, with soft updates enabled. Although the other computers that I have with FreeBSD on are running ZFS, which in part is thanks to Waza64, who uh, inspired me from, to actually experiment with uh, ZFS. Thanks, Waza. FreeBSD can also read and write to other file systems from other OS's, in particular Linux and Windows. You can read and write to EXT2, 3 and 4, as well as NTFS, FAT, FAT32, XFAT and XFS. FreeBSD has nearly everything that you could ever need on your workstation or desktop. But there may be a time where you need a Linux application and FreeBSD can use Linux apps and in some cases they actually perform better on FreeBSD than they do on their native Linux system. Here you can see the Eagle CAD uh, program running on FreeBSD under the Linux ABI and it runs flawlessly, it's perfect, it's fast, there's no slowdown, there's no degradation, there's no tearing, because it's not an emulation, it's using the system calls from FreeBSD itself. But it just happens to be a win, uh, oh, it just happens to be a Linux program. To check out the version, version 5.12. Point zero for Linux and it runs perfectly.
I've never had a problem upgrading FreeBSD, either from one major revision to another or a point release. And even on day-to-day -day package updates and security updates, I've never had the system being hosed or uh, made inoperable at all by any bad upgrades. It's, it's worked flawlessly every time uh, without a hitch. I mean, the fact that you can either install your program using packages, then the upgrading of them packages is it, fairly straightforward. You just package update and it will upgrade all the packages that you can. Want a more customizable uh, setup, then you can use ports. Or you could even mix both. Although I always tend to shy away from doing that, I tend to either stick to one or the other. It's only every now and then if I really want to customize an install of a, a of a, um, an application that I'll go into the parts tree and uh, configure it to my taste. Otherwise I just I, I stick with packages. It's a lot easier, a lot simpler, and it just gets on with it. After the months of daily use since FreeBSD 11.1 was released, this installation of FreeBSD has been responsive as you would expect. After hours of watching YouTube, word processing, burning DVDs, ripping movies, video editing, audio editing with Audacity, you know, the usual things that we now demand of our systems, with perhaps some 3D rendering, some CAD, some CAM, and some VoIP calling, the system feels fresh and responsive. Perhaps one of the earliest and essential tuning that you'll need to do to FreeBSD in order for it to become a, a better feeling desktop is to edit the, the syscontrol.com file, which is in the uh, in the etc or etc directory. It will enhance the desktop responsiveness under high CPU use. Out of the box, FreeBSD has this set at something which is an equal balance that's good for servers, but not so good for desktops. When you when you change it to the value of 200 or 224. It provides more responsiveness. I honestly believe that you can't review an operating system unless it's installed natively on real hardware and also used in a real world setting. Well, I think that virtual machines have their uses, very much so. I don't think you can review an operating system that you've never used before. And many reviews concentrate on using uh, HTOP to measure system resource use. But that's soon as they've booted in. The only thing that's been loaded up is the, the GUI interface, the, the desktop environment or the window manager. Then people look in awe and wonder that it's used 200 megabytes because it's not doing anything. Use the, use the operating system for a week, for a month, for six months, for a year. Use it every day, use it for different tasks. Then look at it to see how it's going. So everything that I could think of that I've done on a desktop or workstation basis has not crashed, phased or halted um, FreeBSD at all. It's taken everything I've given to it. When the system gets responsive, it didn't lag, it didn't phase out on me. This is FreeBSD running on 10-year-old technology. Absolutely brilliant.